Anyway, Apple opens up the App Store uh, to retro game emulators. Yes, let me open up the article. I saw somewhere <clears throat> say that this was only Apple TV, but that's not true. I think a lot of people were most excited about the possibilities on the Apple TV. Why? The, the, the iPhone. Right, but TV. So, so many people have iPhones. I think that because, okay, I mean, we're not reading the article yet, but I think because Apple TV like is a very capable gaming machine. Mm -hmm. And despite Apple's best efforts, nobody respects it as a gaming machine. You know, because yeah. all the games that they have on there are really just iOS games. I could like, see that, yeah. up res to uh, 4K and can play, be played with a controller. So I think this is the first step to making it a respectable gaming pe uh, piece of hardware. Okay. Yeah. Beyond just, you know, iPhone game. I think people see it as like a console. Yeah. Because it's, it, it's the closest you can get. It's the closest Apple's going to get right. to a console. Yeah. Okay. Apple is loosening its App Store restrictions and opening the marketplace up to retro game emulators. In an update on Friday, Apple announced that the game emulators can come to the App Store globally and offer downloadable games. Apple says those games must comply with all applicable laws, though, an indication it will ban apps that provide pirated titles. The move should allow the retro console emulators already on Android, at least those that are left, uh, to bring their apps to the iPhone. Game emulators have long been banned from iOS, leaving iPhone owners in search of workarounds via jailbreaking or other workarounds. Um, they're also one of uh, they're also one of the key reasons so far that iPhone owners in the European Union might check out third party app stores now that they're allowed in that region. Uh, Apple's change today could head that off. Alongside the new rules on emulators, Apple also updated its rules around super apps such as WeChat. It now says that mini games and mini apps within these apps must use HTML5, clarifying that they can't be native apps and games. The change uh, seems to come in response to the antitrust lawsuit filed by the United States, which accused Apple of attempting to stomp out both cloud gaming streaming services and super apps. Apple recently started letting cloud streaming services like uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming and GeForce Now onto the App Store. Outside of the US, Apple seems to be responding to pressure from the European Commission. In another rule updated today, the company said it will now allow music streaming apps in the European Union to include in-app links that point users towards outside purchases and mention pricing information. It will also allow developers to invite users to provide their email address for the express purpose of sending them a link to the developer's website to purchase digital, uh, digital music content or services. After the commission called Apple's anti-steering rules illegal, Spotify attempted to update its app with links to its website to purchase subscriptions, but didn't receive approval from Apple for weeks. Spotify still isn't happy with Apple's most recent change, however, as Apple is still planning to charge a commission on purchases made through outside links, despite EU commissioner uh, Marjorie uh, Vestager saying Apple must allow music streaming apps to communicate freely with users. Following the law is not optional, but Apple continues to defy that decision. Spotify <clears throat> spokesperson uh, Jeanette Moran tells The Verge, effective April 6th, the commission can start non-compliance proceedings uh, and impose daily fines. It's time for divisive, decisive action to once and for all give consumers real choice. So <clears throat> this is thanks in large part to the uh, European Union uh, cracking down on Apple. Yes. Uh, that doesn't have reach here in America, but for whatever reason, they're they're loosening up their I think it's one of, of those service. things where it's just easier to loosen it up worldwide yeah. than it is to like segment you know certain things here and there yeah. and it means that they had to have certain provisions for specifically right animators. if they're gonna have game streaming services why not yeah and it's just interesting that they're like hey we know emulators are gonna come here so we might as well write that into the terms yeah. of service and they could straight up have been like no emulation mm -hmm. to consoles that already exists because you know they might want a good relationship with nintendo or whatever but it seems like they don't give a fuck about that yeah uh it seems like they see where the law is um notably valve just a few months ago 
was like, we don't want to get in trouble. Hey, hey, Nintendo, is it cool if we let Dolphin on on Steam? Yeah. And they said no. Apple's just like, yeah, come on down. We don't care. Mm -hmm. It'll be fine. Uh, so here is exactly the part in their terms of service. Is it even terms of service? Uh, yes, I believe it is. Uh, I keep calling it terms of service. I think this is like uh, this is the fine print. It's the fine print, regardless of what. Yeah. yeah. The app store like rules or whatever. Yeah. Uh, here it is. It says uh, mini apps, mini games, streaming games, chat bots, plugins, and game emulators. Mm -hmm. That's them specifically acknowledging emulators. Apps may offer certain software that is not embedded in the binary, specifically HTML5 mini apps and mini games, streaming games, chat bots, and plugins. Additionally, retro game console emulator apps can offer to download games. You are responsible for such software offered in your app, including ensuring that such software compi complies with these guidelines and all applicable laws. So they're saying, Hey man, we know emulators are uh, can can exist and they're fine and yeah, they're allowed they're popular in, in a lot with the of kids. They're popular with the kids. They're allowed on a lot of different app stores. Mm -hmm. Uh just for the love of God, don't allow downloading of the games. Yeah. Which I think uh, is extremely reasonable. And I think most, you know, most if not all emulator makers out there today understand that. They understand the the rules to a T. And they wouldn't want to risk. Well, I don't know. You know, having you know, being able to download Super Mario Brothers straight to your phone. I think all emulator makers know that you just can't have the ROM available, right? But um, I think that there's a lot of emulator makers who are going a little over the line, right? We, we, we saw with Yuzu where they're like having a Patreon and whatnot. Yeah. Um, after play, I made a video on this already. They're they're uh, on iPhone uh, mm -hmm. emulation and stuff. There's a web app called Afterplay, which yes. is awesome. Uh, it allows you to play your ROMs through a web browser, and it feels like you're playing it on your phone. It's not streaming. It's it's just it's cached in your web browser on your phone. So you are playing it off of your phone. It's not yeah. streaming. Um, and it runs awesome. The way that works, uh, you upload your ROMs to like some cloud service, and then it downloads to your phone mm -hmm. whenever you want to use it or whatever. Um, there was a different app called Eclipse that's not as good, uh, but they had Google Drive support. So you link Google Drive and all of your ROMs are there on Google yeah. Drive. I would like Dropbox support specifically because all right. my ROMs are on Dropbox. But um, that seems to be the workaround because on an iPhone, you can't just put files on an iPhone. You could, but it's like a pain you, you in the could. ass. You have to like connect it to your computer first. And at least on Mac, you have to go into Finder and like start clicking and dragging on windows. You, I think you have to actually go into iTunes. It's not as easy it. as yeah. uh, it used to be, or it's not as easy as plugging in uh, in a micro SD card and dumping your ROMs. Yeah, it's not or like that easy. connecting your phone to your computer and it's showing up as an external drive. Yeah. Like that would be the easiest thing to that do. Would be, and then you have a whole file system and everything. Yeah. Uh, it's not like that. So getting the games onto your phone is gonna be a bit of a yeah. problem, but again, just integrate Dropbox and everything will be fine. That extends to also to the Apple TV because that mm -hmm. doesn't have a way to connect to a computer right. at all. There's no like USB cable. There's no micro SD card slot. The only way to really connect to it is over Wi-Fi or if you have the more expensive model, like with an Ethernet connection. Right. So they would have like the... Uh, the app makers would have to uh, integrate a way uh, for cloud saving uh, for cloud linkage to Dropbox or Google Drive and whatnot. Yeah. Like it, it becomes that much more important. And that doesn't mean you need internet access to use it. It should cache. It should just be the first time you use it. Yeah. Or you just at, least, download it. at least be able yeah, to download it to your device. Yeah. And cache you, it yeah. locally somewhere. Yeah. Um, that's perfectly reasonable. But again, huge win for us because uh, this is Apple specifically acknowledging it. This is one of the biggest uh store uh, digital storefronts in the world yes uh so having specific provisions for emulation is a massive win for for us i was yeah. uh, uh like two three weeks ago i was actually worried that their emulators were not going to exist anymore yeah <laughs> and now this gives it some legitimacy mm -hmm. um did i thank hadley 
for the five British pounds. Happy birthday, Will from England. Oh, thank you. Good day, governor. I got my spot of tea over here. Love. Shrimp on the barbie. I know England. <laughs> mm, yes. Um. All right. Now I'm looking at the chat, Steve. Okay. A lot of people in Japanese on Twitter complaining about Delta emulator being jank. Oh, that's there's a lot of really janky um iPhone emulation stuff. Well, yeah, right now because it's all uh you know under the table. It's all yeah. you need a jailbroken iPhone, yeah. you need to like know how to like hack an iPhone and things yeah. like that. Like it's not official. I remember there was an official, unofficial GBA emulator for the iPhone. And it was during like the brief window where you were allowed to download apps from the web. It wasn't really like downloading it from the web. You had to like save the web page as like an icon on your Oh, desktop. that's what I did with Afterplay. Yeah. yeah. And like you could like, they would, they would allow you to like upload ROMs and stuff, but like that got shut down quickly. And I think Apple closed that loophole and there haven't been emulators on iPhone since. Yeah. Uh, unless you like jailbreak it or whatever. Yeah. I, after, after I made my video on Afterplay and all the other ways you can play games on your iPhone, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people were telling me I had to try all this other stuff, and a lot of it was had to do with jailbreaking the 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 phone. And yeah. uh, I don't want to do that. I've jailbroke I jailbroke my phone many years ago. Yeah, when I had the three G, uh, and it ruined the phone. Like the phone yeah. was worse after doing yeah. that, and I don't think it's changed much. Uh, uh, I, I did, did jailbreak, jailbreak my iPad, iPad, I think, to get Dolphin on it, okay. uh, and that also sucked. So yeah. I'm not. Uh, it's not worth it to me. Plus, I have a million other devices I could play these games on. Yeah. Uh, having an official storefront that just lets me download like RetroArch or whatever would be great. Yeah. It's gonna be a while till uh, that stuff like gets approved on the App Store and mm -hmm. then uh, yeah. you know makes it to us. So. It'll, I, it'll it'll be a, probably like a couple months yeah i do wonder two. like is there gonna be some like weird apple rules to the whole thing i think it's possible they're saying this and then they just don't allow because i was listening to the verge cast it was an older verge cast but it was about um you know being able to sideload apps in europe yeah and in order to be able to allow a sideloading app like in europe apple has all of these extra hoops you have to go through like they actually make it just as difficult if not more difficult than they did in the past like you have to be you can't be a independent developer you have to be a legitimate uh app publisher already you have to have a million downloads of like your previous apps which is very difficult to do wait i thought uh, are you saying that they're not allowing consumers to sideload apps I mean, you, you, no, consumers can sideload the apps, but in order to make a sideloading app available, there's still all these hoops you have to jump through. Oh, well, that's got to be squashed immediately. Yeah. Well, that completely invalidated. Yeah. There's so, well, it was like what they were talking about here with the whole, um, you know, not having to pay the Apple tax. Apple's still finding a way to make developers pay the Apple tax of 30%. And so they're trying, like, there's all these little loopholes Apple's yeah. finding and like, working their way through malicious compliance exactly uh yeah it's possible that they do some bullshit with emulators too yeah i mean there's gonna be a lot of weird stuff uh apps may offer certain software that is not embedded in the binary specifically html5 mini apps and mini games streaming game okay yeah additionally retro game okay yeah i was thinking because i'm worried about uh there's a lot of gray area with the uh, uh, BIOS files yeah. on, on, yeah, on yeah. Uh, emulator apps. Uh, our court system said they were legal 20, 30 years ago, but that doesn't mean that that could hold right. up, you know? So it's possible that they could say like, hey, you can't say that this is a GameCube emulator. You know, yeah. you can't use Nintendo Cop copyright you can't have the gamecube bios on here there mm -hmm. could be like a lot of different restrictions on, yeah. on this so we're just gonna have to see i see a future where uh in a month or two we had just had straight up retro arc on on our uh on our iphones yeah that would be, cool. be awesome yeah because retro arcs just start everywhere yeah it, it only makes sense for them to go to the last one <laughs> but i also see a 
future where Apple does some weird bullshit and makes it just hard. Yeah. But regardless, they still added some legitimacy to it. And this, I can only see this as a positive. Yes. Because right now there's nothing. Yeah. Right now there's nothing on the app yeah. store. But also, too, like, emulation. you know, like you said, this is one of, one of the big biggest app stores in the world it's the biggest company in the world and here they're they are legitimizing uh emulators in a way that nobody really has in the past right yeah. you know that, that everyone's com- been actively delegitimizing yeah emulators. delegitimizing at worst or like ignoring at best yeah. and here they are they're coming out and saying like all right have at it yeah. just put I'm- it Google's been pretty good because they've yeah. allowed it on the Android storefront, but they haven't acknowledged it. Yeah, Apple but, is over here straight up acknowledging exactly. it. Exactly. They haven't acknowledged it. And like the Android store, you know, for better or worse, is like a, a wild west. Yeah. They have less restrictions. They have less, you know, oversight. But at and the you same can time, sideload. So and it like doesn't sideload, even matter. But at the same time, you know, that's like a double edged sword because that leads to a lot more malware and malicious content and like just junk that like floods, floods the marketplace. You know, yeah. say what you will about, you know, the walled garden, but there's a reason why, you know, apps you download on iOS are much more reliable. They're much, they're much, they come out much sooner because there's like a stricter set of rules to follow. And it's easier to follow that than, you know, having to make one app for like a thousand different Android phones and getting the approval process. So yeah. It's a lot easier on, on Android than, yeah. it was, than it is on iPhone. So, yeah, I, I'm, uh, Happy with this news. Apple's new rules will let users sideload apps and download alternative app stores. They come at a cost for develop. Yeah, we just talked about that. Um, so, oh, what's this? Oh, this is just a tweet about it, right? Yeah, that's um, Wario64's tweet about the fine print. Oh, yeah, this is, yeah. we pretty much read this. Yeah, I don't yeah. think there's any, I did a control F for emulation. And I think that was the only yeah, stuff yeah. that actually mentioned emulation. Software offered in apps under this rule must follow all privacy guidelines, of course, include a method for filtering objectionable material, so like uh, smut. Yeah. Uh, Use in-app purchases, use in-app purchases in order to offer digital goods or services to end users. It must use in-app purchases? Uh, Do they mean like... Oh, to offer digital goods you have to use in-app purchases, not offer your own side marketplace like what Epic tried yeah, to do with Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. Uh, your app may not extend or expose native platform APIs to the mm-hmm. software without prior permission from Apple. Your app may not share data or privacy permissions, blah, blah, blah. You must provide an index of software and metadata available in your app. You, your app must share the age rating of the highest age rated content available in your app. So if, you, if you're if you a game streaming service like Xbox uh, uh, Game Pass, Pass. then uh, it's rated M. Yeah. Basically. The whole thing's rated M. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's great for Which us. is dumb because the ESRB specifically has like the rated, you know, E to M like sticker to explain that there's going to be a wide range of games in here, mm-hmm. you know, be careful of what you allow your children to say. Yeah. And it, they, and like game they, pass is smart enough to like offer a feature where like they can like filter by like action adventure games, yeah. by puzzle games, by games rated M, you well, know, this even said you need to have a feature that limits, yeah. uh, uh, age restrictions that has mm-hmm. age restrictions. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Xbox, Game Pass should have the E through M yeah. situation. That would make 